Blair, Dr. Miller with a journal club. Uh, this one may not seem very, <laughs> depending if you like biochem, this is kind of like um, looking under the engine, uh, the hood of a car or the bonnet if you're not from the United States, and seeing how the engine works. Okay, so um, in doing so, though, you can understand how uh, the car runs, how it operates. So um, stay with me if you may. Hopefully I didn't lose you already, but um, I think you'll see kind of the, the cool part of this study and, and looking at the physiology behind muscle hypertrophy, skeletal muscle hypertrophy, and one of these um, major concepts of satellite cells and the myonuclear domain theory. I've had a video, I think I put a video up on myonuclear domain theory back in the day when I, I um, kind of encapsulated in this idea of muscle memory. Um, and so this, this article kind of addresses some of those things as well. So the, t the topic, and this is a open access journal, so I'm not doing any copyright violations by showing you. Um, I'm going to read the title to you and then we're going to look at a picture that kind of summarizes everything that um, this article talks about. And so fusion and beyond satellite cell contributions to loading induced skeletal muscle adaptation. And I, um, who tipped me off to this one was Dr. Schoenfeld and, I, um, because I follow him on Instagram, not because he wouldn't know who I am, nor should he. Uh, but he, uh, had the picture that, um, I thought was very interesting. And so I went and found the article and, um, read it myself. And, um, it's a review article, meaning that it's, it's gathered in the available literature we have on this idea of satellite cells. And I'll explain this in a minute and as it relates to skeletal muscle hypertrophy. So again, you can see here all the good information. I'm going to scroll through that. I'm not going to read the article to you, but I am going to scroll down to this picture here and move myself over there. And let's talk about satellite cells. If you're interested in, in some of the mechanistic uh, things that are happening when, um, when somebody gains skeletal muscle mass. Now, I think this, this article is really nice. If you get a chance to read through it, I'll put the link in the description of the video because um, it talks about not just the satellite cell contribution, which is important, of course, um, but the fact that we don't un completely understand the satellite cell. I just put up a video about reductionism and how, you know, a lot of studies, original research studies are reductionistic, but you have to, a reductionist um, uh, approach, and that's fine, but you have to take those studies, that's what a review article does, and put all the pieces together to try to figure out the picture. Okay, so it's like taking a puzzle and I got this piece and this piece and this piece. How do they all fit together to give me the actual picture of what's going on? And the reality is uh, most like things in physiology, we don't have a complete picture yet, just like we don't have a complete picture of uh, understanding um, satellite cells contribution because there's so many, quote unquote, I hate this word, but I'm going to use it anyway, nuanced um, things that are going on, like the age of the individual, how big the muscle is already, um, right? What part of, you know, growth even are they, this end of person, right? Um, most of the studies are, are with rats because it's, you know, you can dissect them afterwards, I'm honest with you, and control their diet and control all these external factors. So anyway, let's talk about, you might be wondering what the heck's a satellite cell. So satellite cell, they name, and the article does some really good job of even talking about the history of the satellite cells. Um, they have this, this cell that hasn't been differentiated yet, kind of floats around and uh, when there's skeletal muscle damage or the skeletal muscle wants to grow, which are linked together, of course, um, the uh, satellite cell will come in and add and be differentiated, right? So it goes through the, if you know, the um, stem cell kind of um, sequence, right? Um, it's, it, uh, I won't go into quiescence and progenitor cells, and all that, but it, just think of it this way is that um, the satellite cell becomes more nuclei. And if you're not familiar with the idea of myonuclear domain theory, um, I always use the example of teachers. And again, I've had a couple of videos of this already, is that it teaches in a classroom. So typical cells, like your typical biology cell, is you add, if you have a teacher in a classroom, the classroom gets too big, too many students, you'll just divide the, the classroom, um, take, you know, and, and essentially clone the teacher, right? And so you have two teachers now in two separate classrooms, one in each classroom. That's what a typical cell will do. Okay. The skeletal muscle though, in humans doesn't do that. Um, it'll, the classroom essentially is, can only get bigger if you add more teachers. So if you add more teachers in the classroom, you can add more students. Uh, and this idea of myonuclear domain means that, um, there has to be enough oversight from the teacher in order to add more students. If you don't have that, then you can't see the skeletal muscle get bigger. Um, uh, and so, you know, the, the studies are out there linking like anabolic steroid use to an increased number of nuclei, uh, in the cell. Um, resistance training, the nuclei team seem to pile up around, uh, the nerve, right? Innervation sites, the neuromuscular junction, the sites of neuromuscular, where the nerve is innervating the muscle fiber. Um, all these things seem to, uh, uh, follow that resistance training, um, and tension induced stimuli, right? Um, cause the nuclei, the satellite cells come in and, and be differentiated into these, these nuclei and these nuclei then can allow the fiber to grow. Okay. So again, satellite cells, Nuclei, more nuclei, bigger fiber. All right. Um, and so the, this article explores this idea, well, what the heck goes on with the satellite cells? How do they help? Is it just getting the skeletal muscle fi fiber bigger? Um, 
and is this linkage perfect? And the answer to the, to the question, is this linkage perfect, meaning do you need satellite cells to grow? The answer is um, it appears that there are nuanced times when that does happen. Okay. And so in recovery to damage, it appears that it's valuable. Um, it appears it's valuable in type one expansion, uh, because of the promotion of what's you can see here called uh, angiogenic factors. Angiogenesis is the creation of new capillaries in the muscle. So think of this as, um, blood flow channels, right? So the smallest structures, capillaries that run through some more uh, opportunities for more blood flow. That makes sense that, um, satellite cells coming in and differentiating may be beneficial for, um, triggering more blood flow to the skeletal muscle, especially type one fibers. Not familiar type one fibers are the endurance fibers. Okay. So that could be a mechanism that's really important. And it may be important in type two fibers, uh, resistance training, because that is going to, to allow for the greater skeletal muscle hypertrophy. So the article talks about ECM extracellular matrix, uh, and this, the importance of understanding that that's the management of the students, if you will. And it appears that there can be some hypertrophy that occurs up to a certain level of the, 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 the think of this, like the teachers, the teacher can handle 30 students and you got 20. And so you could add 10 more students without adding a teacher, but there will come a time when it appears that you need to add a teacher in order to expand, in order to, um, have a, a greater increase in the total number of students you have. You want to have 40 students, you're going to need a new teacher. You're going to need another nu uh, nuclei in the mix. And again, this plays in this idea of myonuclear domain theory. There has to be a certain amount of oversight. But th this article does support this, you know, uh, explore this idea that again, satellite cells have other, fact, uh, other um, contributions. And there's other contributions to skeletal muscle growth. Okay. And so I made this review article, number one, to talk about satellite cells and myonuclear domain theory, if you're not familiar, familiar. But the other one is to talk about these other factors. Um, so you can see this picture here, IL-6, which is a, um, a cytokine. So it's an interleukin-6. It's a part of the immune system. It's an inflammation marker from training. Uh, and folistatin, which again, same kind of thing. It's a biochemical pathway um, in order to promote uh, satellite cell usage and uh, in promoting greater skeletal muscle hypertrophy. Okay. These appear to be important factors as well. Testosterone. Everybody talks about, a lot of people talk about testosterone. Acute testosterone in ups and downs are probably not that important other than it's, it's chronic exposure to higher testosterone levels that stimulates skeletal muscle hypertrophy. So again, you have all these little factors. So if testosterone is present continually, or at least quasi continually from resistance training, and you have some of these markers like IL-6, um, you have some skeletal muscle damage that's occurring down here, right here, when it talks about these, um, you know, focal membrane damage, right, of the fiber. So in other words, repairing the fiber, you have the interaction of nitric oxide, which if you're not familiar, is um, close to the endothelium layer. Uh, that's the internal layer of the, of the, um, of a vessel. And that's releases nitric oxide, just in virtue of blood flow. Um, there's, there's so many factors that play into skeletal muscle hypertrophy. Okay. So why talk about this? Well, supplements supplements and reductionist approach to research. So supplements um, will promote these, these pathways. If you just do this, you'll raise your T levels and da, 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 da. Well, if you don't raise your T levels outside of the normal physiological bandwidth, it may not make that big of a difference, at least acutely. So if you don't take that supplement for the very long term, if that supplement doesn't in fact raise your T levels, eh, in fact, it can be turned into estrogen. So I'd be very careful of things like androstenedione dione in the past, which is illegal. But, you know, some of these supplements, um, testosterone isn't an A to B type of thing when you have these pre-hormones, these pro-testosterone uh, hormones, like these pre-hormones, basically. They're up the testosterone tree. I'd be very careful with those. So supplements. So I hope this this article would kind of demonstrate, though, that, that things are not as simple as uh, it may seem in the marketing world. Um and then number two, you know, when we look at research literature, again, we try to explore why we get bigger and stronger, or like when we, we lift up something like testosterone as this, oh, it's all about testosterone. Um, well, if you're not on anabolic steroids or you're not without, below the physiological bandwidth, it, testosterone is just one of many factors. So, you know, getting super jazzed up about testosterone um, isn't bad, but it, it neglects these other contributing uh, uh, factors not included here is protein intake, right? And this, this is just a mechanistic um, look at how skeletal muscle fibers get bigger and the contribution potential of satellite cells. But it just draws into my mind, like all the different uh, avenues that things are not as simple as they may seem. 
things are not as simple as they're presented many times um, when it comes to how uh, human physiology operates. Um, and if you look at a lot of the, the many of the studies that were cited in this ar- uh, in this article, uh, which was well written, um, they're rat studies. So you know, how much can you infer from rat studies? Well, you can infer some, but it's not humans. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to make um, just wanted to go through this, and maybe you found this interesting. Maybe if you did, if you didn't though, check out my other videos on a variety of topics, ranging from book reviews to journal clubs, to rants and um, you know topic. You know, different sets and rep schemes, all kinds of stuff. Check out the library videos. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Hope I didn't bore you to death. If you made it this far, congratulations. And um, you all have a good day.